Can you hear me? You can? Good. <coughs> सहनावतु सहनाओ भुनक्तु सहवीर्यं करवावहि तेजस्विनावधीतमस्तुमाविद्विशावहि ओम शांते 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 हि गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु हो गुरुर देवो महेश्वरह गुरुरे वपरम ब्रह्मा तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः We are in the tenth mantra. Ishtapurtam manyamanavarishtam Nanyachreyo vedayante pramudhaha Nākasya prushthe te sukrute nu bhūtve Nākasya prushthe sukrute nu bhūtva Imam lokam hīnataram vā viśanti Imam lokam hīnataram vā viśanti Ishtāpūrtam manyamānāha वरिष्ठम्। First I'll explain what the mantra meant in those times and how it can be applied or interpreted in today's world. इष्टापूर्तम् मन्यमाना वरिष्ठम्। Those who consider this kind of कर्मकांड, our अखंडा नंद सरस्वती महाराज from Vrindavan, he says, जो कर्मठ होते हैं, वो मरकट होते हैं। He was just punning with or you know the shuffling the words here and there, or letters here and there. कर्मठ, those who believe in their actions as the end, as the goal. मरकट, मरकट meaning those who are the monkey kind. Monkey brand, because they keep jumping from one karma to the other to the other, trying to achieve something permanent, which is an impossible task. Ishta purtam manyamana varishtam. Those who consider these kinds of karma kanda as the greatest, as the goal. See, these are the means, but if we mistake it to be the goals, what will happen? And, and they also say, na anyat shreyaha vedayante pramudhaha. These people also vouch for that there is nothing better than the karma kanda and its various applications. So, such people who are sold to karma, 
they can be called as pramudhaha. Uh, murkha is category one. Mudha is category two. Those who have specialized in that field, experts in being a murkha, they are called pramudha. They have got post doctorate in various methods of murkhatva. Nakasya prashte te sukrate anubhutva nakasya prashte. Nakasya. Naka means nakam, means kam sukham. Kam, that word means not come in English. Kam as in Sanskrit means sukham. Akam, akam means dukham, that which is not sukham. Nakam, that which is more permanent than the trivial pleasures of this world. So, what is the other word for swarga? Nakam. Nakasya prashthe. So, these people definitely go to the heavens. And after having gone there, sukrute anubhutva, the results of their punya phala, they enjoy in that world. And then what happens? Lokam hinataram va vishanti. <clears throat> they come back to this world and depending on the intense vasanas that they have generated in this world, they need not be born as human beings alone. Hinataram va vishanti. They can go into any of the options of their vasanas are, are demanding. Just for the concept to be understood, I am using it as an example, not that there is a scriptural reference to it. Say, supposing in this life all that we have done is uh, accumulated lot of wealth and uh, lived very stingy, miserly. So, we come back and not necessary that we come back as a human birth. So, what could be the option? One of the options could be that we born as a squirrel. Why squirrel? Squirrels are said to have uh, a very keen interest in trying to accumulate lot of food for the rainy days. But poor little squirrel has only so much capacity in its uh, you know memory that it keeps forgetting where it has kept all the food that it has stocked. And many times it goes to the place where it has hidden and feels so thrilled, so much of food and then hides it in a second place. All life long it keeps moving. And whenever that particular vasana is done, then the next vasana trait that was more emphatic in this life as a human being we take to that birth. After having cleared all these different vasanas, Bhagavan thinks that okay, now we can give them an give this jiva an opportunity to come back into a human life. It's very clearly stated here. He nataramva vishanti, because there are many schools of pandits, there are many uh, thoughts in this particular thing that once you have reached to the human life. There is no possibility that you can get back to lower life forms. No, there is no guarantee. Upanishad very clearly uh, rubbishes that particular thought. So imagine in this life, if we, whatever patterns that we are developing, it is like a blueprint. Blueprint that we are developing for next life to be. And it is a very suffocating thing, I believe. Why is it a suffocating thing? Because only in the human birth, all the capacities are fully flourished. All the capacities. Say in this life, we have been very lazy, lethargic. All that we have done, three times. 
swaha and then sleep through the day then in some amazon jungle we will be born as a boa constrictor python because what does it do it is so lazy that it does not even move to hunt for its food it keeps its mouth open waiting for the prey to come by and once it has uh, swallowed its prey then it ties itself around some post pillar or a tree until that which it has eaten is digested and then again after few months hi na taram va vishanti that is why they say many masters have said that manushyatvam being born as a human being is one of the rare phenomena to happen and every human being who is born is searching inadvertently for the same thing there is nobody who searches for misery there is nobody who searches for uh, incompleteness everybody inadvertently whether they have brains or no brains the child who is who has according to the uh, physiological development they say that their brain has to yet develop even that child when there is discomfort say in their cradle there is an ant that bit that child or the cradle is uncomfortable there is a certain folding because they keep twisting and turning that it has become a lump and they are very uncomfortably placed in that cradle what do they do wireless call ah, wherever that mother is she has to run back to that child why even that child does not like something which is of discomfort in nature that that kid may not even know that it is called hunger but there is some discomfort here and the mother is not to be seen one equipment that he uses he or she uses right from birth is this speech the cry out loud janma siddha adhikar we were born crying we are efficient at that even a child has that so here the shlo- this particular mantra is trying to say <clears throat> in our in our today's uh, world and realm there are many who believe that and they also tell swami ji my father or my husband you know, they are karma yogi uh, please bring them I, i don't mind prostrating to a karma yogi no 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 what i mean is they are dedicated to their job oh being dedicated to a job doesn't make you a karma yogi that job that we are doing where do we dedicate that job to what altar do we dedicate it to makes it a karma yogi most of us have the altar which is uh, the initial beginning phase what is the altar that we dedicate all our actions to and we as indian parents love to rub it in so we come uh, after slogging and you know working a whole day and the children you expect certain results and they don't give us that results and then we into their face we scream why do you think that i am working and putting so many hours it is so that you can be comfortable growing up do you think we had all these comforts we never had any of these and why are we trying to provide it for you so that that we could not enjoy you can enjoy so definitely that is one altar that we can say is a starting phase that we do all our karma for what for our family for our children so that they can be given the best but that is not end in all ask anybody 
even though they have been coming to Chidma Mission, listening to the lectures, but somehow this, this subtle point, I don't think it is subtle, but this, this one beautiful point does not uh, go beyond their firewalls. <clears throat> Ask them randomly this question, in your practical day to day life, how do you apply Karma Yoga? I take care of my family and I provide for and I protect, this is my Karma Yoga. But that does not make it Karma Yoga. Maybe a little subtler than that, then you say, uh, you know, doing good, being good. Is that also does not cut it to make it a karma, make it a, on the field of Karma Yoga. Little subtler than that <clears throat> are those who make it their life's mission to go out there and serve serve the community, serve the society, serve a certain cause. Even that service, Swamiji, okay then tell us what makes it Karma Yoga. Is it a different kind of action that has to be done which makes it Karma Yoga? No. The same actions that we are performing, performing it with a different attitude makes it Karma Yoga. So, Guruji very beautifully puts it, he says, it is not important what we do, but it is definitely important how we do what we do, which makes the Karma, Karma Yoga. So beautifully said, it is not important what we do, but it is definitely important as what we do as to how we do it that intensity changes it to be Karma Yoga. Remember always the third shloka of Upadesha Sara, nothing could have been said that simple. That is the true understanding of Karma Yoga. Ishwara Arpitam, Nechayakritam, Chitta Shodhakam, Mukti Sadhakam. How many words? Four words. Entire Karma Yoga is filled in there. I will repeat it. Ishwara Arpitam, Nechayakritam, Chitta Shodhakam, Mukti Sadhakam. This is Karma Yoga. <clears throat> First, Nechayakritam. So, somebody was interpreting it, Nechaya Kritam, uh, desirous of doing Ichaya Kritam, Nechaya Kritam, doing it in spite of not being interested in it. Are Baba, <laughs> Khatarnak interpretation. Nechaya meaning doing the action selflessly performing the action selflessly and then dedicating it to the highest altar. Now, at this moment as we constantly have in the back of our minds that whatever I am doing it is to provide for my children, provide for my family, provide for my kith and kin, similar should be in the background that every single action that I am performing is being performed for the Lord of my heart. How do I do it, Swami? How do I do it for the Lord of my heart? So, the interpretation is very beautiful and very simple. Whichever platform that you work on, wherever you are interacting, whoever you are interacting with, interact with the attitude, with the mindset that you are interacting with Paramatma in that form. Why have we in Hindu culture named our children Bhagwan's names? At least by mistake, we take the name of the Lord. <coughs> I 
even those names these days are very peculiar names that we end up hearing uh, one that i can never forget this was in our own fort worth area they named the kid as timir timir means darkness andhakara agnyana timira andhakara moodhatva all these are synonyms the first time i heard it i said we are changing his name i call him tejasvi <laughs> the reason we are supposed to name our kids something related to the lord so that we are constantly thinking of the lord not just thinking of the lord but seeing that child as the lord you may have heard this statement pati parmeshwar have you okay all your smiles indicate positively <laughs> patni is also parmeshwari that is the second part of the statement which nobody says i said it <laughs> that every form of being that you interact with is nothing but paramatma that paramatma has come into our life taking that particular form whether you worship ganesha whether you worship kali whether you worship shiva whether you worship vishnu whatever would be the idol of your worship has taken that form to come in your life see this concept got deep into me after i went through the life of it is an autobiography a travel or kind of a thing called in quest of god by papa ramdas of kanjangat kerala and you should read that book amazing depth he sets out with the mantra that his guru gave ram naam mantra and then everybody that comes into his life is rama and he called himself as that rama's dasa so he goes out saying that i am going in quest of god though god is everywhere i want to see god in all places in his glory and you know somebody comes takes him somebody you know just drops him and says okay rama thought that this is for Uh, there must be some purpose in his own mysterious way. and he believed it in such depth that everything in his life he every person every experience he said that was the blessings of rama and that was rama in that form who had come to teach him or guide him even there were people <coughs> they said okay he had certain regulations he would not eat uh, food with salt and mirchi he would not eat uh, on few days he would eat only fruits so he would said baba ram ji i'll eat only fruits so he said i can't afford uh, getting fruits for you so you know this particular street has all rich people go beg arms and whatever money they give i'll buy fruits for you they said okay rama's instruction he would go stand there and ask beg and whatever they give he would give it to this person i mean that is not so practical you know living baba get the concept get the concept that every person that is being introduced in our life comes by comes across in our life is the form of the lord and it is my uh, duty it is my responsibility to serve that lord in that form and this has to be applied by anybody in any walk of life whether it be brahmachari whether it be grihastha whether it be vanaprastha whether it be sanyasi it doesn't matter whoever that you are interacting with 
if that intensity is there and you know that that form of lord is in this format in front of you now imagine what kind of beauty that comes about in your action because if the lord really has come in that form would you give, would you do anything as a shortcut would you do anything to annoy or uh, to irritate that lord in that form imagine just the the conviction of that changes the entire lifestyle ishvar arpitam nechaya kritam when that done used as a means not as a goal that is the clarity that has to be brought in this first 10 mantras of this second section in the first chapter which has been stating is that do not deal the day to day karma as the goal but deal it as the means means to propel yourself to the next stage of spiritual evolution because all these actions limited will give us only limited result take us to swarga nakasya prashte te sukrte anubhutva imam and after having gone to swarga a meager accumulated punya that we have is spent you go for a vacation and uh, or in, you know you go to that uh, mela or the arcade you know you take your kids to various this arcade and uh, is it called arcade those machines and other things so right in the beginning you give them a card 10 dollars worth 5 dollars worth whatever and you know when will they come back to you <laughs> when that card is done with isn't it similarly how long will we be in swarga as long as the punya card works and after that punya card is exhausted it is like a debit card not a credit card it will work only if you have in the account after that is exhausted you are picked back into the martya loka and what form do we take any form that see if in this world we have lived like a stone heart no I mean stone hearted person no spandana no response to anything probably will that that particular jeeva will be born like a tree how old are the redwood trees here 2000 years old tall up there you know the, the tree doesn't have the capacity to suck water all the way up there it has to survive by the moisture that is there in the environment there in the atmosphere there <coughs> poor fellow that jeeva so whenever i am in nature there are many kinds of thoughts that go in my head one you know, the beauty of the creator second in that beauty trapped is the jeeva poor jeeva for how many years is he trapped there 2000 years bechara khada hai wahan pe can you imagine standing for 10 minutes still 2000 years martya lokam hinataram va vishanti we come back to this world and it need not be a human birth it can be any birth depending on our different sets of vasanas <clears throat> hey
Hence, therefore, the scriptures have always indicated what is the way out. The way out is given in the starting from the 11th mantra. <coughs> Repeat after me. Tapashraddhe ye hyupavasantyaranye Shanta vidvam so bhaikshacharyam charantaha Good effort. Surya dvare nate viraja prayanti. Yatram rutasa purusho havyayatma. Kyavyayatma. <coughs> Tapaha shraddha ye. Upavasanti, those who build tapascharya and shraddha in their heart. One of our recent most saints used to always guide his disciples with these two words. He used to say shraddha and then saburi. But for many years, I did not understand the meaning of Saburi. It later dawned. Saburi means sabra, to have patience. Shraddha, faith does not cut it, it does not give the entire meaning. Shraddha, faith plus reverence plus respect plus uh, trust plus belief, all that put together plus something else. That is the depth of that word Shraddha. Those who inculcate tapascharya and Shraddha in their heart and have the courage to live in solitude. We will come to that as to what are different phases of solitude. Swamiji, what will happen to this world? Why do you worry? Are you the CEO of this universe? Let him bother. Narada took away first two crops of uh, creation into sannyasa. Did he not create again? Sinking so deep in uh, all kinds of rubbish and still it was a sort of global talk. What will happen to the universe? It will be a better place, I bet. Okay, let us come back to that. What does solitude mean? Shantaha vidvamsaha. And then, what are they doing in their solitude? Not whiling away their time. Not whining about the rest of the time that they are working. In that solitude, shantaha, shantaha, inculcating the habit of being in peace. I tell you, with already having different kinds of uh, vasanas, the new trend of addictions that we are in the world right now. I have seen people, the moment they wake up, first thing, any emails, that the world will fall down. And I have heard so many people say, I don't know what we would have done without cell phone, we would have been a better place. The quickness in communication. Fine, we have made lot of leaps in earlier it was any you know earlier days when there was the telegram sent. You watch the old movies, Hindi movies. It would always be with that serious music. Why? Telegram. Hai. Telegram means something bad. 
and today anywhere in the world you can send a text message at no cost those were the days and these are the days even while sitting in a satsang cannot put away these instruments many people don't know you know there is the camera there up there oh is there <laughs> there is a inverted shivalinga <clears throat> which is supposed to record me so one day i was fiddling around with it and you know the, the, for some reason the session had begun and they were uh, chanting the shlokas i arrived late so i had asked them to start it was, i was it was a route in my on my behalf to enter in when it is half way through so i was waiting inside that room that's i call it vishwadarshana <laughs> so i was fiddling around with that camera and while fiddling it and i moved it inadvertently i moved it and it came right on the spot of those back benchers three four of them texting away and the teachers tell me swami ji tell the kids you know during satsang or during uh, assembly uh, the kids are texting each other bacche to bacche baap bhi bigde hue they are also similar cannot just put it away we are so intertwined in it that to find two moments of peace there is fear ab kya karu what should i do you know i have nothing to do i am feeling bored catch that boredom chupa chupi khelo <laughs> with that boredom what do you call chupa chupi in english hide and seek तो पकड़ो तो सही बोर्डम को एंड देन यूज दैट प्रशांत वातावरण दैट एंटायर एनवायरमेंट टू डू व्हाट विद्वांस इन सीरियस कॉन्टेम्पलेशन भैक्षचर्या चरंत भैक्षचर्या whatever has to come by in life let it unfold let it come such people <clears throat> are indeed the blessed ones now let's get back to tapa and shraddha there are two things in life one is called tapascharya the other one is called titiksha both of them have a little difference before we step into tapascharya we have to learn titiksha then we can get qualified for tapascharya so what is titiksha this is not a new concept that i am bringing i have already said this many times in the second chapter of bhagavad gita the 14th shloka talks about it in detail <clears throat> what does titiksha mean life is full of twists and turns don't you agree we plan one thing something else happens so this kid brings this paper artwork swami ji guess what it is no clue so uh, as a clue that kid says turn the page you'll get a clue i turn the page till no clue i turned it upside down and i said i lost you tell me it was looking like a ladder okay on both sides there were two brown streaks and there were lines across these parallel lines they are not exactly parallel somewhere you know up and down and 
the kid says, I didn't want to say a ladder, because if it is not a ladder, uh, he'll feel really bad. So I kept quiet. Maunam <laughs> is best weapon sometimes. So I asked, you tell me what it is. He said, it is a snake trying to catch its own tail. So he had two parallel lines on both sides of page and there was those streaks for the snake's body. I, said, I was going to ask, where is the head, where is the tail? He said, the head is eating the tail. <laughs> when they bring, we are as much surprised, we don't know what they are bringing. Similarly is life. We never know what turns and twists. Banana kuchcha hai chate, ban kuchcha jata hai. He wanted to make a snake, it became a ladder. Even in our lives. You know, when first statue of Gurudev, after his Mahasamadhi in 93, 94, there was this statue <coughs> inaugurated in uh, Sandipani Sadhanalaya, Bombay. A majestic seven and a half feet tall. Or his Guru Bhai, who was then the head of Divine Life Society, Swami Chidanandji. They had all taken sannyas on the same day. So he was invited to inaugurate it. So he came by, inaugurated it, offered flowers at his feet, unveiled it, inaugurated it, unveiled it, offered flowers at his feet, and very silently was walking. He was a very man of very few words. <coughs> One of the reporters who was, uh, you know, assigned the job to find the initial reactions of Chidanand. Yes, to, you can comment on it later. So she kept on asking, "What is your opinion? What is your first feeling? What is?" Your? He kept avoiding it. Bahut acha hai, bahut acha hai. Decoration acha hai. You know, the design is good. The decoration is good. The entire environment is good. No, Swamiji, how is the statue? And that was one question he didn't want to answer. He kept avoiding it and circumventing the entire thing. But she didn't give up. And then finally he said, somebody should have, you know, a placard or something written, this is Swami Chinmayananda. <laughs> because for, some, for those of us who have seen him live, to suddenly see it in a murti and which, which has a vague resemblance, no, no, nowhere near to it, it didn't even feel like real. It was very, very decently put by Chidanandji. Life also is like that. We try to make something out of it, something else only happens. And as life unfolds itself, Without reacting to it, ability to respond to every event that is unfolding in life with equi a balanced mind, that is called titiksha. After having achieved it, then is tapascharya. We have not even started meditation, okay? The foundation itself is wobbling. And then we want to take a dab at the highest step. Why? It has become a fad. What? I also meditate. Good for you. One good American word that I like. Good for you. So after taking care of you know, that first step, that as life is unfolding, maintaining that equanimity and responding to every situation consciously. Then is tapascharya. What is tapascharya? All that which is comforting, one by one, pick those things that which are comforting, 
which have become uh, almost like addictions in life. For example, early morning tea or coffee. See, there is nothing wrong in having tea or coffee, do not get me wrong. But being addicted to it and feel the sense of comfort in such depth that the absence of it throws you off balance. Pick that as tapasya. In the initial beginning stages, you know, say for 15 days, no coffee, no tea. and then increase it one month and whatever is your uh, basic things that trouble you your patterns that trouble you you know you could achieve a lot only if you could cut down on sleep say you sleep 10 9 10 hours a day In 10 hours, Swamiji, there are people sleeping like that. You will be shocked. So, what should be tapasarya? Cut it down to you know, gradually in decrease it. Because the kind of activity we do, that kind that much amount of rest is not required. And that's also a habit. There are the other uh, extreme, the people who overdo and sleep hardly. So, what should be the tapasarya? That at least sleep every day. <laughs> there are people, I am not kidding. I come across people who do not sleep for you know, two, three days. Why? I have a project on hand. Oh, yeah, so to low. And there are people who say, you know, all these obsessive things that we are intertwined with. We ourselves are not perfect. But we want perfection from everybody that we interact with. How dare we can even demand that? Keep that as tapasarya. Whatever is troubling you at this moment, get out of that comfort zone. Giving away something which you are cocooned in as a comfort is tapasya For that you need lot of stamina. If the day to day life it cannot be handled with equanimity, do you think we can take this extra step of having tapasya So, after observing me for another two years, so one of the Shivara three times. He said, I was working, you know, whole day I was working, in the afternoon he saw me. He said, Kuch hai se? Bala nahi. Jao kuch khao. And I do not know what happened in his mind. He said, Ruko. Chalo mere saath. And he took me to his room. And then made somebody, he said, Go get something to eat. Ab bad ke khao mere saamne. And then he said, with lot of compassion in his eyes, he said, for many who do not work, for them the tapasya is to not eat. For somebody like you who is working whole day long, your tapasya is to not miss a single meal. <laughs> See, we get carried away even in this tapasya. I fast. 
I also fast, but just one word in front of it. I eat fast. <laughs> See, what is the purpose of the tapasya? To grab that mind out of its comfort zone. To grab that mind out of its complacency. If maintaining fast helps grab that mind out fast. If by maintaining that fast it gets over agitated, stop fasting. Eat fast. So that is the balance of tapasya. And then develop shraddha. Shraddha in what? Shastrasya Guru Vakyeshu Atmanam Devatancha Four places. Have complete faith in God. What kind of faith? That if He has put us through a difficult situation, He would give us the solution also the strength to go through it also. See, even if you observe nature, like I was going to Amarnath, and after a certain while, you know, it is such a steep climb. And there is nothing that you can rest on. It's continuous steep climb. And suddenly it drops, it drops like a 60, 70 degree drop. After walking for half a day, you know, bade bade ki nikal jati hai. And we were gasping for air. There's a little kid who does this trip twice in a day with the horses. <coughs> so he looked at us, Bauji. And then he, he did quickly climbed the hill, uh, hilly side of it got back some herbs and then you know squeezed it crushed it and said keep smelling it and the moment we started smelling it it eased our breathing <coughs> wherever there is a problem the solution is also provided by the lord that is how nature works that is how he keeps entire nature in balance The one who could provide for food and every requirement for you when you are in the womb, don't you think he will take care of you when you are out of the womb? <coughs> think about it. I mean, it should not again be misunderstood that, you know, uh, and become complacent in life. Understanding this, and acting in with that kind of confidence in Bhagavan. Second, that which explains the glory of Bhagavan. What is that? The scriptures. Shastra. Having trust in Shastra. <coughs> Now, when I say having trust in Shastra, what does it mean? Whenever we take to this scriptural study or any scriptural injunction, we start with disbelief. There is nothing wrong to investigate, there is nothing wrong to question, so that you can get better clarity. But if we doubt, it leads us nowhere. Without even investigating, just because we don't understand certain things, we are ready to trash the entire scriptural knowledge. And what is the logic? It doesn't make sense. Right? There are so many things that we do, that we have, that, we, that, that doesn't make sense. Do we just trash everything? So when we go through the scriptures, go with the openness, open your heart to Shruti Mata 
And when we go with that openness, sahana vavatu, sahana bhunaktu, may that effort put with that openness. And it is not a shocking experience. The scriptures will reveal unto you. The inner depths, inner meanings will reveal to you in your contemplation, in your sadhana. Shastra and then Deva. Third, that guru who is bringing that shastra to our doorstep so that we can understand. Shastra, Guru and Deva. And the last one, we may have Deva Krupa, we may have Shastra Krupa, we may have Guru Krupa, all three things may be given. But if we don't have the last part of faith, and what is that faith in our own self? You know, we listen to scriptures, especially on Saturdays and Sundays, it is fun watching different facial expressions. You know, these are all high funda things, you know. <laughs> when the, 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 uh, the days through the lecture, it feels good to hear, but I don't think these are practical things that can be applied. It is just a feel good factor, it is just a psychological thing, good for you. There have been students, Uttamadhikaris, whose guru gave them one instruction, just one instruction and the guru attained Mahasamadhi. You are Paramatma himself. And with the conviction that the Guru gave the guidance, they realized. Sabari. I think the word sabr comes from Sabari. What amount of patience she had. When she was a young girl, when she approached, when everybody else refused, taking uh, or giving shelter to her, her guru gave her the shelter. And looking at her, he gave only one advice. Keep the ashram and the entire path to the ashram clean daily. Why? Ramji will himself come to bless you. Bhagwan, when he takes avatar in the form of Rama, he will come to bless you. If I and you were there by third day, kab aa rahe? Aa rahe ki nahi? Or kya guarantee hai? What is there to believe here? It is not practical. <laughs> Look at that shabari. What amount of Shraddha in Guru Vakya? And when she was ripe old, Ramji comes and she says, I knew one day I would definitely see you Maharaj. And for that one day, there was not even one day in between that she slacked behind saying, well, when he comes, I will say. <laughs> And that in today's standard is called smartness, effective working. I will employ two people, keep them in the downhill, when Ramji is coming, <laughs> then I will go clean up the entire place, why Guru said. And you know why we do not have Darshan of Bhagavan? It is exactly because of that dumbness called smartness. That those are the ones in the earlier shloka who are called pramudhaha. Do 
Guruji doesn't give uh, mantra diksha to anybody. And this mantra diksha was given because that fellow was insisting. So he gave Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. So the student, come, when that disciple comes back, when he asked I was there, when he came back also I was still there. <coughs> he says, Guruji, personal question. I said, what? I need a change of mantra. <laughs> that is not hilarious. So Guruji looks at him amused and he says, why? He says, bada mantra hai. <laughs> Give me some shorter mantra. Like you know, Om Namah Shivaya, Hari Om, Om Namo Narayanaya. You asked me to do 10 malas? It's becoming impossible. <laughs> so what? Cut shot the mantra. <laughs> no, trust in the words of the Guru. And that one instruction is more than enough to change the life. But we don't have that kind of faith. We slack behind, we drop, we, 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 there's so many conveniences that we develop. It's not even funny to go in that field. <coughs> Tapaha Shraddha. Upavasanti Aranye. Aranye in the forest, dwell in the forest. The idea being, the crux being, acquire solitude. Meaning, at least in a day. Spend few minutes with yourself, wherein don't speak. <clears throat> I had seen my father. Uh, until he had done his puja, he would not speak to anybody and he would not respond to anybody. Morning puja. That was not the only time that he would not speak. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Once he sits to eat, whatever be the kind of food, no comments, no commentaries. Eat and get up. And later he would not even comment on the food. Acha hai, ganda hai, ya kuch acha kar sakte ho, nahi kar sakte ho, nothing. And the same thing I had seen in my grandfather. Now going back into their system or their way of life, it reflects a lot. Few moments in a day, sit without getting distracted with gadgets, with instruments, with anybody to do with outside world. Stay firm. Stay in that solitude. And in, when you are in that solitude, don't get, don't be carried away by boredom, by feeling, um, you know, useless or worthless. I don't know, I am sitting in solitude, I could have done this, 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 I could have achieved so much. Shanta, that is the next word. Acquire that peace. We the, the, the greatest aspect of this creation, claim to control so many things in this world, cannot control one stupid aspect called mind. Our own mind. <laughs> we just can't say, shut up. And the mind says, why? Sleep, I don't want to. Wake up, why? Eat, I don't feel like it. And this is how our mind reacts. So I was at somebody's house and this mother definitely with lot of effort, lot of love must have prepared it. 
and the kid goes and really pushes the plate away. Eh? Uh, food sucks. I said, <coughs> mark my words to that kid. I took that kid aside and I said, mark my words. 10, 15 years down the lane, when you will have your kids and when you slog with all your love to give them the best that you can afford and then your kid throws it across your face, that is the day you will appreciate your mother's effort. Not until then. The mother comes back and tells me, Swamiji, after that he has never done such kind of things in on the dining table. He eats whatever is given. We just don't appreciate what we have. And in that appreciation, dwell in that peace rather than being impatient, restless, agitated. It's an acquired quality. You are not born with it. You have to acquire it. And then he says, <clears throat> in that silent moment, contemplate on the highest truth. Contemplate on the conscious aspect of life, beautiful aspect of life, and the auspicious aspect of life. That which can take you to the core of your own being, contemplate on that. Vidvam Saha, Bhiksha Charyam Charantaha. See, what is the attitude of Bhiksha? You have absolutely no say what comes your way, isn't it? Say you are going on streets begging for arms. Can you sit there in, in front of that uh, house and say, <coughs> you know, sorry my lady of the house, uh, I have little ulcer. <laughs> Can you give me something else? Whatever comes your way. We, I mean that again goes back to Shraddha. We get what we deserve, though not what we desire. This day is coming in the world. There will be such contentment in life, such people, <clears throat> they go through the Uttaradwara. See north in Sanskrit is called Uttara. Uttara has two meanings, one it indicates the direction, second through Tarane, through means to uh, evolve. Uttarane, that is why in Hindi to pass and to graduate to the next grade, it is called Uttirna. It comes from this word through Tarane. <coughs> Uttarane, to evolve to a higher state of being or existence. So, such people who develop this De Surya Dvare Nate Virajaha Prayanti. They should get realized in this life. Even if they miss realizing it here, because of this kind of tapasharya and shraddha that is maintained throughout the life, that at the end of the life, their punya takes them directly to Brahmaloka. What happens in Brahmaloka? 24-7 you are in that highest contemplative state and when Brahmaji's tenure is finished, 
you merge into Paramatma. That is the Uttara Marga. Those who do not do this, they go through the Dakshina Dwara. <coughs> you know what is in Dakshina Dwara? Even I, I was surprised when you know the relations get sour or uh, when a deal goes, they say it went south. I was really surprised to get uh, hear that uh, usage because who is in south? Our Yama. Yamaraj is waiting to churn you back into the system of wheel. So, what should the individual do if this is the kind of instruction so that is stated in the 12th mantra? This is also very famous, very important mantra. Parikshalokan karmachitan brahmanaha. Nirveda Mayan Nasti Akrata Kratena Tad Vignan Artham Saguru Meva Bhigachet Shrotriyam Sorry Samit Panihi Shrotriyam Brahmanishtam <coughs> So, what should the individuals like us do? First, see the magnanimity of the scriptures, it is not laying out commandments saying thou are doomed if you do not. See that is the one option, this is the second option. And then what is the instruction? It says to the student or to us individuals, Pariksha Lokan Karma Chitan. Every aspect of our life, Pariksha, Pariksha, investigate into it. What is it that I want in life? What is it that I have to learn? What is it that I have to give up? Where is it that I have to reach? What is the purpose of my very being? Say if you understood, <clears throat> tomorrow morning you wake up and you investigate and you say, going to New York is my goal of life. And you get into your car and you start driving. And after 5 6 hours of your driving, you see that Mexico border. Swamiji, you said New York, right? Exactly. See, whatever is the purpose that you investigate and find, if what you are doing is contrary to that purpose, is it an intelligent life? Is it a worthy life? Is it a worthy lifestyle? Everybody aims for happiness and does exactly contrary to, to reach that state of happiness. What do you call that kind of a lifestyle? Pause. If things are going haywire and you are not reaching where you are supposed to, stop. Take account of all things that are happening, investigate into every nitty gritty details and blast every information in. Thorough investigation. Kar kya rao? What, what exactly am I doing? Where am I supposed to head to? What am I leading myself to? Pariksha Lokan. Here Lokan does not mean investigate the outside world. Investigate your world of experiences. And one good investigation is in the waking world. But instead people become so serious. <clears throat> Swamiji, I had you know this dream wherein I saw so many lights and it was all well lit. Uh, 
there are lots and lots of bulbs lit bulbs what does what is the meaning of this dream waking ka matlab to samjhani a dream ka kya samjhau so you know next time what you do take a big duffel bag get all those bulbs we will use it in saket swami ji i'm asking seriously mai bhi seriously bol raha hu here lokan means the world of experience in your waking world here brahmana means whatever field that you are in whatever is the expertise that you hold investigate it thoroughly again nirveda mayan na asti akrutah krutena nirveda mayan one good word is nichodna squeeze every ounce of wisdom from your own experience you will find one truth and what is the truth na asti akrutah krutena that that which we are trying to accomplish cannot be accomplished through the field of actions and this is exactly the meaning what bhagwan says in again the second chapter while introducing karma yoga we all know the shloka karma nyeva adhikaraste ma phale shuka dachana मा कर्म फल हेतुर्भू माते संगोस्व कर्मणी एंड फॉर सच अ जेम ऑफ दट श्लोक वॉट इज अ पुअर इंटरप्रिटेशन डू युअर बेस्ट टू लीव द रेस्ट इट हर्ट्स बिकॉज दैट इज नॉट अ जस्टिफाइड मीनिंग फॉर दैट एर सम क्लिशेज दैट वी हिंदूज कैरी अराउंड एनीबडी आस्किंग वॉट इज कर्म योगा do your best leave the rest my new cliche to add to that is shut up and arrest your thought right there cuz what does it mean that which you are searching karmani ev adhikarah karma you cannot give up mate ma phaleshu kadachana and this karma cannot give you that phala which you are anticipating through it what is the phala that we are anticipating peace and happiness can we gain it our own life's experiences when we squeeze every ounce of wisdom out of it will reveal this fact naked truth that we have gone through this road umpteen number of times hitting the dead end reaching nowhere and if you have not reached that point i pray to that almighty that you reach there sooner than later that dead end the the most hilarious irony here is everybody goes through that experience that we hit that dead end and we take the same road with the anticipation maybe today it will open up and give me a better result karma cannot give happiness it is not in the nature of karma to give peace and happiness it cannot provide that see when we are trying to get something which is not its nature and we keep you know quarreling with that karma who will be disappointed who will be disenchanted with life ourselves it may seem funny because i put it that way 
just ask question simple question how are you people tell their entire life in their response what chal raha hai getting along and some of the most uh, disturbing answers pulling along hanging in there just close your eyes and visualize it pulling along what picture do you get that there is such a huge burden that is you know tied down to their waist and they are pulling along हैंगिंग इन देयर सब कुछ कट गया बस एक ही बचा है पकड़ा हूं सेल्डम कम अक्रॉस एनी बडी यू से हाउ आर यू रेस्पॉन्स विद अर इन देयर रेस्पॉन्स एंड से एकदम चंगा द बेस्ट द ग्रेटेस्ट हाउ आर यू सो सो क्या अभी भी सो के उठे हो एंड द वर्स्ट पार्ट दे इमीडिएटली एंटिसिपेट सिंपति अरे रे व्हाट है उठो दैट इज व्हाट वाज कठोपनिषद सेइंग उत्तिष्ठता गेट अप आउट ऑफ दैट स्लम्बर जागृता वेक अप फ्रॉम दैट प्राप्यवरान निबोधता we are we, we are not only in that hanging state but we glamorize it in such a way that we can seek attention now i'll talk around thoda sa how long will we go on with that there should be one cut off point wherein i say enough is enough let me pull myself out of it and having reached to that point saying that yes i have seen through this karma <clears throat> what do i require i require a better guidance hence therefore tad vignanartham sah gurum eva abhigachet approach a guru samit panihi I gave you right. Why this is called Munda Kopanishad? Shaven head with the burning embers on their head and the twigs tied in bunches in their hands. Samit Pani hi, Samit Pani hi indicates all that in one picture. Probably to indicate that I have seen through life. There is no sara in it. How is it? It is like this dry twigs. meaning i am now true to my conviction that the world cannot sway its colors on me any further dry twigs indicate that amount of dispassion so the dispassionate one goes to the guru and how do we identify guru that's a big question big dilemma again there is no eguru.com is there i don't know wherein you go and say i need a 6 footer anywhere between 40 to 60 a long white dadi preferable a little paunch akhanda mandala karam can we do guru shopping and if the first two steps are taken care of of this very mantra the first two lines are taken care of that prepared individual <clears throat> is blessed by the guru who visits him you don't need to search for a guru guru comes to you le beta do you need any help and when you do get such 
don't give that opportunity away for anything else in life nothing is worth grab it with both your hands and how should that guru be the scriptures have even defined that guru shrotriyam brahmanishtam two qualifications erudite and scholarly well read through the scriptures those who can give the the entire crux of the upanishads or entire crux of the scriptures in a language that that student can understand and it is not given that this upanishad is saying or that upanishad is saying it is my experience hence therefore i am telling you it is from that authenticity from their own personal experience brahmanishtam that they are giving the guidance to the shishya shrotriyam brahmanishtam <clears throat> and having reached to such guru and what should the shishya do it's again very seriously pathetic condition after having got such guru where is our focus and attention even around such gurus you will find shishyas so called shishyas there is competition there is jealousy there is uh, you know bragging pulling pushing with guru dev or guru ji aise and with three four people they'll cook and bring okay. okay lay them down and introduce this is what i have cooked and leave it at it no they'll make sure that the earlier person who had brought sab vanish he should eat my food only pagal <coughs> pas again got you know limited what should a, a, a student who has seen the depths of karma yoga or depths of the field of karma karma ki bhumi ko se nichod ke dekha hai then there is no sara in it it's nisara should that student be wasting again in this kind of gymnastics so that is also indicated what should the student do in the 13th mantra <coughs> which is a glorious ending for this chapter tasmai savidwan upasannaya samyak prashanta chittaya shamanvitaya yenaksharam purusham वेद सत्यम प्रोवाचता तत्व ब्रह्म विद्या आई टेक अनदर फोर फाइव मिनिट्स एक्स्ट्रा टुडे आई हैड रीच दी आश्रम दिस इज वे बैक इन नाइंटी थ्री एंड आई हैड रीच देयर अ वीक बिफोर और समथिंग that we our our vedanta course was to begin and they were laying the flooring for a certain part of what we call today as the annakshetra annakshetra is where food is served the kitchen and the food serving area so they had a tiles they removed it then they had marble they removed it like within two days or three days span there were two different kinds of floorings the entire place was laid down and again ripped off what a waste of resources so i went straight to guru ji <coughs> i said swami ji i think there is a lot of wastage you know this can be done in this 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 way and whatever has been it can be reused in this 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 way i went with a whole plan so very patiently with a big smile on his face he you know very relaxed listened to me 
and then immediately bends forward, picks his phone, intercom, calls the manager of the ashram, <coughs> and the manager of the ashram comes in running. And I'm thinking that you know he has taken my notes seriously, and so as soon as the manager comes, he says, "Iska naap lena." Not take a measurement, and by tomorrow give him uh, brown clothes. You know, all those who worked in the ashram, they used to wear brown khaki color clothes. Ek iske liye silwa dena. So I was like shocked, surprised, all put together that emotion in my face, looking at him. I thought he is very clear. You know, I thought you came here to study, but if you are interested in this, we have a different uniform for them. I don't mind you joining that either. And that one statement straightened me for the entire life. <laughs> Why should we reach uh, when we reach the guru? What should our focus be? A kamra kaisa hai, kamar kaisa hai, flooring kaisa hai. These are not the, the things to be focused on. Tasmai sa vidwan upasanna ya samyak, having reached such great soul, such great master, prashanta chittaya samanvitaya in their presence, acquire that peace within. Subdue all your organs of perception and action, bring them in your control. Then, when you approach and the teacher feels that you are qualified. Provachatam tatvato brahma vidyam. They are, they are introduced, inducted to the highest science of life, which is called brahma vidya. And what is that brahma vidya? Come back next month, we will start with it, which is in the second chapter. <coughs> Om Purnamadaha. Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shant Shant Shantihi Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyonamaha Harihi Om Nitish